Mr. Yavitz, I have a very important question I would like to ask you. Yes, please. Uh, it concerns life. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how, how it got here, how it started, by evolution or by creation? This is a very good question, a very important question. Yes, uh, so uh, the Bible say in the beginning God created the world, the heavens and earth. And it, that is, in my opinion, the only truth. But uh, those who subscribe to the um, evol evolution theory think differently. But even those who subscribe to the evolution theory admit to the fact that the possibility that the first molecule arrived into existence is one out following like 213 zeros. That's only the beginning of the first molecule. From that point to the creation of a human being, the mathematical possibility is extended even further. To say that all uh, what we see around us, the moon, the star, the human being, the, the animals, was created by chance or by uh, uh, blind forces is absolutely ridiculous, preposterous. So, I will just ask you a question. If I will tell you that this watch was created by itself, would you believe? If I will ask you, tell me, if uh, the Eiffel Tower uh, was come about by chance, you will believe? Of course not. So, my dear friends, has the watcher as a maker and the Eiffel Tower a builder and this table a carpenter and your shoes a shoemaker Undoubtedly, the internet, awesome, precise, intricate and accurate universe, the sun and the moon, as undoubtedly a creator. In addition, I would like to emphasize that uh, every person must know that there is a supreme being without beginning, without end, namely God, who created all things. And his existence is intrinsically imperative. Theoretically speaking, let's say that God will cease to exist. All the world will collapse. Look in heaven. Who created all these uh, marvelous things? It is almost impossible for the human mind to comprehend such awesome size and tremendous distance. The heavens declare the glory of God and the splendor of His majesty. So, we must know that there is a creator, a master architect who created everything. He is one. He is one. And nobody besides him exist. As it's written, he is the first and he is the last, he is the beginning and he is the end, he is alpha and he is omega, and besides him there is not a God. That's my answer to you. Uh, yes, not only is God the creator of the universe, but the cosmic order depends continuously on his will. As it's written, it renews daily, perpetually, the work of creation. Nature is not a part of God, but rather the fulfillment of His will. He is the place of the world, but the world is not His place. It has been said that in a leading American university, we could see a sign, God is dead, sign Nietzsche. The next day, another sign was added, Nietzsche is dead, sign God, the eternal, the almighty, the everlasting. 
The ladies and gentlemen, the real God never dies, for God is the fundamental energy of the universe. He is the author of all natural universal laws and the designer of history. Everything that occurs is in a deep sense is doing. Not by might and not by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord. For he spoke and the world came into being, he commanded and it appeared. So, since uh, the dawn of time, since the first uh, man uh, walked on the face of this earth, man always was bothered by the question how and by which manner he can understand the, rea the reality around him. From the anthropological and archaeological research, we may conclude that all the people, from the most uh, primitive to the most civilized, believe that in the natural phenomena, as the uh, thunder, lightning, the tsunami, the big storm, uh, an earthquake, and all kind of uh, natural disaster, the spirit of God is within it. Even in a small seed, in a small grain, that uh, grows and became wheat or a, a huge tree, the Spirit of God is with it. So the, the seeking after God um, existence started already, we can say, let's say, since his story is here, let's say from Avram, the founder of the Jewish nation, through the ancient uh, Greek um, philosopher as uh, Aristotle and Socrates, through uh, more uh, modern uh, philosophers uh, as um, Rene Descartes and Pascal, and before even that, uh, before that, uh, uh, by Confucius and Buddha and, and Jesus Christ and um, Moses and King David, all these people always seek for the existence of God until this very day. In spite of the fact that uh, re religion and, th and the Bible were under attack during the course of history, faith in God continues to prevail until this very day, until here and now. So to conclude this question, I would like to emphasize that God is one, he has no a body and no a resemblance to a body. For God is a spirit, God is a burning fire, a consuming fire, as it's written in the Bible. Some people want to see God before they will believe that he exists, but that it makes does it make sense to see the one who created all these marvelous things? It is almost impossible to look directly at the sun without being blinded. So how we can see the one who created all these suns and stars? When Moses uh, wanted to see the glory of God, God replied, you are not able to see my face, for no human being can see me and yet live. But some people say, you know, I am from misery, I, I just believe what I see, if I don't see, if I don't hear, I will not believe. But if you believe, you will see the glory of God. You need faith and belief, and then only then you can see the glory of God. Thank you.